In today's video, my top seven fat burning foods. What's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss my seven favorite fat burning foods. So, if you enjoy content that is around nutrition, training, how to get the most out of your physique, and how to look great, we'll hit the subscribe button. That's what we do here. And today's video topic comes because I'm a little bit disappointed in the information that I see that's out there. So, I want to discuss this idea of fat burning foods, and I'm probably going to title the video something like that to get everyone's attention. But once I have everyone in here, I want to talk about the fact that fat burning foods really don't exist. There are no foods that are going to help us magically burn fat. So, let's talk about what makes food good at fat burning and why do I have seven foods that I want to share with you today? Well, the real reason is because our food selection is going to determine a lot about how we succeed and how we progress. Because no matter what foods you eat, no matter how much you try to keep your insulin low or whatever magical approach you're trying to take to fat loss, if you are not creating a caloric deficit, well then, you're not going to be able to lose and sustain fat loss for a long period of time or keep weight off. Essentially, that's what we're trying to do here. So when I look at these foods, these are foods that have helped me, helped my clients, achieve sustainable weight loss and fat loss because they are high value foods. And we'll talk about what some of those values are as we go through them. But I'm gonna start with one that's actually technically not a food, it's a bean that we turn into a drink, and that's coffee. So my number one is coffee. Now why would coffee be something that I consider fat burning? Well. For those that aren't familiar with coffee, first of all, it's freaking amazing. But if you avoid putting a bunch of crap in it, it's pretty much zero calorie. And it's got some amazing properties, such as caffeine. That's right. Caffeine can really help us focus. But what I find that's really beneficial about coffee is appetite suppression. That's right. You can avoid hunger a bit longer because of coffee. So adding coffee into your daily routine is going to be beneficial. Now what I deal with a lot of the time with myself as I diet down for competitions and as I coach competitors or people that are trying to get to extreme places low body fat wise to either do photo shoots or do a wedding or compete is that we're going to have to deal with hunger in some form or another. When you're trying to lose body fat, hunger is going to be there. Coffee can be your friend. Also, other caffeinated beverages can be your friend too, but for today's video, top seven, I just wanted to put it out there, number seven is gonna be coffee. The next food source that I wanna bring in, number six, is gonna be eggs. And why do I wanna talk about eggs? Well, when it comes to pure quality of food and food volume, I find that eggs are invaluable. Why? Well, one of the best ways to avoid overeating and avoid hunger is having food volume. That's gonna really help with satiety when you actually have a large amount of food and nothing is as voluminous as egg whites. That's right, if you cook a bunch of egg whites and get say 40 to 50 grams of protein in a single sitting, it's going to be an enormous amount of food. So that can really help. Protein in general is also something that we really wanna focus on when we're talking about fat burning, okay? Because there are such things as calorie exchanges, okay? So protein is four calories per gram, fat is nine calories per gram. So if you can just make simple exchanges in your day-to-day -day diet and improve the ratios, you can reduce calories, therefore taking in less, increasing fat burning. Again, not a magic fat burning food, but it is gonna help you feel full longer, and get a lot of protein and thus end up eating less throughout the day. My next one would be kind of a supplement, although I don't really consider it much of a supplement because it's basically essentially replacing a food and that would be protein powder. Now, the two most common types are going to be say a whey protein powder, but as I've gotten older, I realize I'm a little bit lactose sensitive so I can no longer use whey protein. My body does not digest it well, so I use a plant-based protein powder to help me with my needs. Now, what do I actually find about these two products that are great? Well, when you're trying to get your protein needs met for the day, it's easy to grab a scoop, put it in some water, stir it up and drink it down. What does that do? Well, not only is it gonna help us retain muscle, build muscle and keep muscle because we're getting enough protein, 
but it's also going to stave off hunger at a time when we might just simply reach for something that's more calorie dense but doesn't have as much protein. So again, these foods are all about replacement and exchanges making better choices. So number five is a protein powder. Now number four is a food that I don't actually eat just because I'm not a fan of it. But when it comes to powerhouse foods, yogurt is amazing. You can use it to mix with other things. It has tons of protein, tons of benefit. So yogurt is a great choice when it comes to eating. It has lots of food volume there as well. You can mix it with other things, make some delicious things like sludge. You can mix it with whey protein. You can have some interesting foods just because of yogurt and it's another one of those foods that we have to consider because it's so simple to store. You can buy it, put it in the fridge, grab it, and go. Sometimes access to food is one of the biggest issues when it comes to staying on track with the diet. So having something simple around like yogurt can be a great benefit. Now essential for any bro, which I consider myself, I love bodybuilding, I like to get in the gym, mix it up a little bit. Well, I consider lean meats essential. Why? Well, when we're talking about hitting our daily goals for protein, carbs, and fats, keeping calories low, we want to hit our protein goals, well, it can be really easy to overshoot calories because oftentimes protein sources are also very high in other things like fat. So lean meats, things like lean turkey, chicken, lean steak, these are going to be great resources for high volume of food. Again, when we're talking about sitting down to a meal and we're talking about losing fat and burning fat, foods that are high in protein that are going to fill us up are going to be a great way to stave off hunger, get us to that next meal, and keep us on track on a daily basis. Now, the difficulty with lean meats are you have to store them and prepare them. Now, typically I like to cook my foods in bulk. I'll cook a bunch on the grill, put it in the fridge so I can just weigh it and eat it, or I'll buy some deli meats. When I'm traveling, that's one of my hacks. I'll go to a grocery store, buy some deli meats, keep it with me. That's a great way to just have an easy protein source available, stay on track with your diet, and keep moving forward. My number two food might surprise you, but air popped popcorn is actually a great source. It's pretty low carb, it's got some fiber in there, and if you air pop it, the calories are very low. You can use something like spray butter and salt just to make the taste a little bit better, but air popped popcorn is one of those things that you can sit down with a huge bowl of it and maybe have 20 or 30 grams of carbs, hardly any other calories involved and feel like you ate something. Again, it comes down to food volume. When we're dieting, a lot of the things that we miss are the actual act of eating. You don't wanna sit down and just have something that is instantly gone and it leaves you feeling hungry and unsatisfied. Popcorn is one of those foods that you can add into your diet. It's easy to track, it's easy to store, and there you go. You've got a high volume food replacement for something that you might have, like say a piece of chocolate. That's gonna be very minuscule when it comes down to the same amount of calories versus an entire bowl of popcorn. It also can feel like a little bit of a treat. And this is something to consider. We don't wanna set ourselves up for failure by trying to eat only foods that are so good that we miss out on enjoying things. Finding foods that are good options, that are also enjoyable, are gonna be a great way to keep things sustainable. Our taste buds will change over time and you'll start to find that the things you include in your diet are a little bit more tasty. And my last one, it's probably gonna surprise people, but it's actually fruit. So why is fruit a fat burning food? Why does fruit help us lose fat? Well, for me, fruit helps with my sweet tooth. Yes, I have a sweet tooth at times, and instead of going to get a candy bar or some chocolate or something that I might otherwise regret, fruit has a few other benefits. First of all, we're talking about micronutrients, right? There is so much value in a naturally grown fruit, and eating it just feels right. And it can also be delicious. I love things like banana and watermelons and a bunch of citrus fruits as well. Also, there are natural fibers in there, okay? So the food is actually a little bit more voluminous than something that might be equally sweet, but is a lot smaller, like candy. So for me, what fruit does is it allows me to add something in through the day that's got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of food volume, and it also has a lot of value when it comes to training and recovery. And anybody that's on a weight loss journey, you need to be including some type of exercise. You don't wanna lose lean body mass. 
So your fat burning foods should also be providing you with energy. And that's what all these foods are. They're good whole food sources that are going to allow you to move, feel good, digest well, because it's not just what you eat, it's what you digest that matters, okay? How your body handles it. Yes, I love cruciferous vegetables, like broccoli, like cauliflower, but I've overdone it on those and paid the price and for days had issues with digestion. So it's important to find foods that work for you. Are these seven foods going to be the best option for you? Perhaps, perhaps not. It's worth a try. Your lifestyle and your goals and your taste buds are going to dictate what matters the most. But understand that there are no magic fat loss foods that you can eat so much of that doesn't matter if you're in a calorie deficit. You must be, throughout your lifestyle, creating a calorie deficit. These seven foods are foods that I use when I diet down. They're certainly things that I recommend to my clients and we've had great success and I'm confident standing behind them. So hopefully you're having an awesome day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.